What's the craziest thing you've ever caught a photo of? I think Kyle has a photo of a UFO. I'm pretty sure he's confident that he has a photo of a UFO on his phone. I think the craziest thing I've ever got a photo of would be, I saw a blimp once. I'm pretty boring. In comparison to this list, let's do it. Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 things no one would believe if NASA hadn't caught it on camera. Yeah, we're looking up for this one. Number 10, Neptune's rings. Okay, for the first time in 33 years, thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, over at NASA, we got a fresh look at Neptune. Now, this new look reveals stunning details of the ice giant's atmosphere, its moons, and its rings. Yeah, its rings. This blew my mind. I couldn't believe that it was Neptune when I first saw this on Reddit. What a glow up. She looks great, honestly. The last time we got a glimpse of her was the summer of 1989, when NASA's Voyager 2 became the first ever spacecraft to observe the planet. I'm excited for the James Webb Space Telescope, what it brings in the future. I don't know if I'm ready though, but this is exactly what I want. Just cool photos of planets. That's it. Also show us a black hole maybe. That wouldn't hurt. Number nine, asteroid redirection. Okay, this next one has Michael Bay written all over it. I'm pretty excited for this project. I can't even catch a baseball with my hands and you're telling me NASA is going to catch an asteroid. Awesome. Let's talk about it. NASA landing on an asteroid, that's one thing. That's a feat in itself. But their asteroid redirection mission is just next level. This coming Monday, like... Very soon, NASA will broadcast its first attempt to modify the orbit of an asteroid. And yeah, before you start to panic, there's no way any debris can hit Earth afterwards in case anything goes awry, or awry, as I said for way too long. But if an asteroid was coming for Earth, well, now we have a backup plan to save the planet and the human race. That's always great. The planetary defense team is using a craft called DART, Double Asteroid Redirection Test, which will ideally target the asteroid Dimorphos, altering its orbit. That's cool. Hope it works or else it won't work. Number eight, Pluto space slug. Back in January 2016, the New Horizons probe was sending tons of information back on our little ex-planet, Pluto. We remember him. God rest his soul. The icy plane shows a series of lines, almost like these giant space slugs are slowly moving across the surface, right? It reminds me of that episode of SpongeBob where the gang is riding a rock for a while. Maybe Patrick and Spongebob are just delivering a cosmic pizza, who knows. This icy area of the dwarf planet is called the Sputnik Planum, and scientists believe so far it's the planet cooling and heating, and then cooling and heating, therefore leaving lines, looking like something's slugging its way across the planet. Just heat and cooling, cooling and heating, heating and cooling, space stuff, you know. Number seven, dead galaxies. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. New research from NASA using the Hubble Space Telescope found six different dead galaxies. Dead galaxies. No fun at all. Imagine if the Guardians of the Galaxy went here. No 50s music, just imagine dragons. That's it. Just imagine dragons, U2, and Nickelback. That's all it's playing in this galaxy. Horrible stuff. Nightmare. These dead galaxies had run out of cold hydrogen needed to make the stars, and without the fuel for new stars, these galaxies were basically running on nothing. Like when your car battery dies. Only, you know, this is a cosmic scale. This discovery led us to a new question that we didn't even know that we had. What led these galaxies to die? How did they get to this point? What happened to all of the cold old gas so early on. These six galaxies lived fast, hot lives, but we aren't sure what went wrong quite yet. And yeah, it'd probably help to know. Give us a few tips, that's for sure. Lead author and assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Massachusetts, Kate Whitaker, proposed several potential explanations and gave us insight asking all the right questions. Like for example, did a supermassive black hole in the galaxy's center suddenly turn on and then heat up all the gas? If so, if that was the case, the gas could still be there, but now it's just cold. We need Thanos or or something to come in to fire it up again. Otherwise, it's gonna stay still and quite dead. Dead galaxies. Imagine if a galaxy came back to life. That's way worse than a zombie. Number six, crescent Earth. There's something you don't hear often, and of course, you won't see this too often either. A crescent Earth. What we're actually seeing here is the Earth as it rises and looms over the Apollo 14 lander. That crescent there is Earth. We look like that from the moon, which is, it makes complete sense. It's just something I never really thought about until now. You see it and you're like, oh yeah, it would look like that, I guess. It would be the opposite. If you were to camp out on the far side of the moon, because the moon and the earth are, you know, tidally locked, you wouldn't be able to see the earth at all in your lifetime. But on the near side of the moon, you'd see the earth all the time, and through the course of about a month, the earth would also go through phases, just like the moon, but they'd be direct opposite phases. People on earth would be witnessing the moon going through, you know, likewise, and I've confused myself talking about this, but you understand what I'm trying to say. I can't believe I've never seen this photo before. It's truly stunning. Number five, smooth moon. While we're on the topic of moons, let's do it. When we think of moons, we think of our own, right? Just a big ball of cheese in the sky. It's got craters. It's got lots of craters and maybe a big old man's face. That's often, that often pops up. 
we get it. Well, moons are quite unique. Some look a little different. Some look quite haunting, actually. Some look like chewed gum and some look like spaceships. NASA's Cassini spacecraft caught this image back in 2017. It looks almost like two moons crashed into one another. It has a ring-like edge. It uh, looks kind of man-made, dare I say. So when new photos come back after discovering this moon back in 1980, scientists were surprised that this moon is actually really smooth. There's just zero craters. It's a smooth moon. One of the smoothest out there. Smoother than your moon. Number four, Jupiter's clouds. We've all seen and heard of Jupiter's big red spot, and that's just a you know haunting nightmare in itself. I don't want to think about that too much. But when NASA's Juno spacecraft passed the Goliath back in 2017, it captured something just as interesting, if not more terrifying, than the big red spot. Jupiter's clouds. Yeah, apparently it's got clouds. It feels like you can almost put your arm out and just touch it. It's like a silky space sky. But that's about 20,000 kilometers away. You can't touch that. There's no way in hell. That's a big ball of hydrogen, and it's quite mysterious below those clouds still. So far, NASA has found lightning higher up that they never thought they could ever go. They found constant storms at both poles and winds so powerful and its magnetic fields are actually moved around. Winds so strong that it moves the magnetic. I can't even comprehend that. Beautiful, mysterious, and deadly. We love space and we love Jupiter. Number three, Mimas moon. Saturn is known for having a plethora of moons. Saturn has 82 moons. If you were a werewolf and you lived on Saturn, you would be so stressed out all the time. Constantly. One of those moons is Mimas, and it's a moon that looks oddly familiar. Yeah, if you're a sci-fi geek, this one's gonna give you some anxiety. Is that the Death Star? Is this thing pointing at Earth? Are we doomed? We're doomed. Saturn's smallest innermost moon caused quite the stir here on Earth when it was first discovered. About a year ago, researchers discovered that the moon has a bit of a wobble to it. Almost like a floating magic eight ball, something that's sloshing around inside, like a water balloon in space. That's kind of gross. Mimas could potentially be housing a liquid ocean inside. Side. And if that's the case, everything we know about water and ocean life and space would need to be rewritten. <laughs> rewritten, I said. We have to rewrite it, please. Everything we know about life and space would have to be rethought and rewritten. It would just be a whole plethora. We're like, that would be cool, but please don't be the case or else we have to we have to do a lot of homework. Number two, space selfie. The word selfie hasn't been around for too long, but people have been taking them for years on our planet and not, apparently. With adjustable views and forward-facing cameras, they've definitely become easier to take over the years, for sure. I've taken a few this morning and in my lifetime. But that didn't stop Apollo 17's Ron Evans from having his own hand at the selfies. Of course, he has to one-up us. A guy goes into space and he's like, eh, pfft. Beat that, 46 million likes. The photo shows about half of Ron, although it's tough to tell with him, you know, decked out in his space Iron Man suit. And apparently he snapped this photo while he was retrieving exposed film from outside of the spacecraft. This is perhaps the most badass selfie of all time. On the clock too, what a king, getting it done. On the way back to Earth, near the end of the mission, Evans did a one hour and six minute long spacewalk. So it's entirely possible that's when this photo was taken. I mean, technically we were all in the background for this one, so we were there. Well, not us, but your parents. Number one, Mars Eclipse. So this last one here is more of a video rather than a single image because you know what? I was feeling nice. I wanted to bring you a series of 89 different images all captured by NASA's Curiosity Rover and then just whip them in your eyes really fast. Make a little movie for you. NASA's Curiosity Rover showed us insights as to what life is like on Mars and what it looks like. So on Earth, we have these cosmic coincidences, you know, the distant ratio between Earth and the moon versus the Earth and the sun. It's rare, but when the moon passes in front of the sun, we get a total eclipse. It covers it completely. On other planets, however, namely Mars, that's not exactly the case. The angles aren't as perfect. So, what happens when one of the moon passes in front of the sun? Well, it's much smaller, and it appears like this. Curiosity was able to observe a ton of these instances, which are called transits. They're not eclipses, they're transits from Mars and its two moons. And these are from Mars and its two moons, from Phobos and Deimos. Yeah, imagine having two moons. That would get confusing. Beautiful, but everyone into astrology would be like, I think it's my month. I don't really know. This other moon here is confusing me. Sound off below what the craziest thing is you've ever got a photo of. I don't know, maybe in space, maybe not. Maybe on Earth too. A lot of weird shit happens down here. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and I'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Bye. I need some Dr. Pepper. I need some Doc Pep, some DP.